Today on Ham Radio Q&A, we're going to set up APRS Mobile for your Yaesu FTM 400, so please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9GBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, Yesu's FTM 400 XDR is a very popular dual band mobile radio that features some extremely sophisticated APRS features. APRS, or the Automated uh, Packet Reporting System, is a real-time tactical mode that allows you to transmit your geolocation and send and receive short messages and beacons. What I like about the FTM 400 is that everything you need is included in the radio. The GPS, the tracker module, and display. Not only don't you need any additional accessories, but you don't have to worry about uh, cables coming loose or connections breaking. But this popular radio also has a pretty deep APRS menu. So today I'm going to break it down and I'll show you how to get started with APRS quickly and easily. We'll tackle some of the advanced features of this radio in a future video. Well, starting out, I think the easiest way to get set up with APRS on this radio is to do it via software. So I'm going to download my settings to an SD card, and then I can work on uh, the rest of it in the comfort of my shack. Okay, I think the easiest way in which to program the APRS features of the FTM 400 is with the uh, ADMS-7 uh, application for the FTM 400 um, because everybody's got this program and they also have the SCU-20 uh, programming cable. Those two items come standard with the radio so there's no reason why you can't use the software uh, because it's just a little bit easier than to, um, shuffling through menus. Uh, but if you don't have easy access to the program and you want to get us and want to get the APRS started on the fly, I'm going to run split screen here so you'll be able to see where in the, the system menus uh, these features on the screen show up. Uh, hopefully that'll make that'll make the process a little bit easier for you. But first thing we need to do is to set our APRS channel and. Uh, the, it can, uh, you can run APRS on both the A band and the B band on the FTM 400, but um, it could, the conventional wisdom is to run APRS on the B band and leave your A band for uh, the rest of your VHF, um, UHF, um, analog, and um, digital uh, transmissions, and then just let the uh, APRS uh, turn away on the B band. If you're not going to be running APRS on the B band, then you can use the B band for something else. But um, so, if the first start out, uh, channel number one, I always use channel number one as my APRS channel. Enter the receive frequency of 144.390, that's APRS uh, frequency in the USA. Uh, transmit frequency will stay the same, offset frequency will be zero, no offset, operating mode FM. I name that APRS, uh, no tone. So you don't have to worry about any of these other things like the CTSS, DCS, um, transmit power. I leave that set to high. Um, and then everything else can stay the same. And that's your channel number one on your B band. Next step is uh, we're going to go into the settings menu. And this is where you'll find uh, the tabs for, uh, for all of the special features of the radio. And there's two tabs here for APRS and APRS Beacon. Um, these other ones, uh, just, I'm just going to show out here um, your GPS datum should be set to WGS-84. Uh, your GPS device, that can be set to internal. You're using the internal GPS. And that's all you really need to do uh, for APRS on this menu. We're going to move along to the APRS tab. Um, the common features, your APRS compass uh, heading up on the screen. Uh, APRS destination uh, for this radio. It should be set to APY-400. That's kind of the designator for the FTM-400. Uh, you can at this point, uh, you can either leave your APRS modem set off or you can turn it on. Um, APRS mute, uh, you're going to want to leave that on. Uh, so then you won't hear the, um, uh, the digital APRS tones 
uh, coming through the speaker on the B panel. You can leave your volume set as you normally would. Apurus transmit delay, 250 milliseconds. That's pretty much standard. Uh, you don't need to change that at all, so leave that set at 250 milliseconds. Okay, beacon text. Uh, automatic on. Three minute intervals. This is for um, as, you're, as you're driving. Uh, you're going to transmit your location on three minute intervals. Uh, you can change it to two minute or one minute. Uh, if you're doing a lot of highway driving, rule, rule of thumb is that you're going to want to set your interval so that it beacons about once every couple miles. So depending on what your average speed is, you know, three minutes might be best or two minutes might be best. And these other items uh, you can leave at their default settings. Uh, we'll get into that with the advanced video. Uh, call sign. Uh, enter your call sign here. Uh, dash 9. Uh, dash 9 is uh, what we use for mobile, mobile tracker radio devices like the ASU FTM 400. Uh, so that's going to be your suffix, your position comment. You can leave that in service or anything else that you wish it to be. Uh, my symbol. Uh, the uh, greater than sign. Uh, will be an automobile, so you can leave it set as that. If you're a truck or a boat or an airplane, you can change your you can you can go down the list and you can change your symbol to whatever you wish it to be. But we'll leave it as the greater than sign. And you can have up to four symbols look you, um, and and change those on the fly. APRS pop up uh, the the radio as it receives messages and beacons, um, it's going to pop those up and hold them on the screen. I've got mine set for uh, beacons, uh, just to stay on the screen for three seconds, uh, messages for 10 seconds, and for my own um, packet, I just turn that off. Uh, Pop-up color, you can have different, you know, for beacons and, and whatnots, mobiles, objects, and items, you can set the colors. Um, I set those all off. Digipath, you've got, um, you, can let, you can leave the path off. Otherwise, you've got two defaults here, wide 1-1, which would be a single hop, or wide 1-1 and wide 2-2, which will give you three hops. Um, I go with the wide 1-1, 2-1 uh, for, the, for the extra hops. Uh, and you can do um, also extra um, named paths, or um, multiple paths, you know, however many, however many hops you want. But we're just going to leave it at the, at, at the wide 1-1, 2-1. The goal of the, of the digipath is that you want to be able, I want enough hops to get you into an eye gate and not so many that you're going to flood the system. So with a 50 watt mobile radio, this is, this is plenty to get you in to an eye gate for mo um, in most places. Down here in the corner, uh, my position, GPS or manual. You know, if this thing was sitting on the desk here, I would leave it set at manual and, and hard code my latitude and longitude. Uh, but otherwise, um, since we're mobile, we're gonna want the GPS to pick that up. So uh, we'll leave it set to GPS. Okay, moving on to APRS beacon. Uh, and really the only things we need to do here is to um, set our Beacon text, and we can have we can have up to five different messages uh, coded into the system, so you can change those at the fly. All I do is I just set my first name and then the word mobile. But then also up here to the right, uh, you can select um, frequency and squelch and shift, or just your frequency. So if you're monitoring a particular frequency on the A band, it will. Um, insert that information into your beacon text. So they'll see as you beacon out uh, your A-band frequency and, um, and, and information, um, CTS code and, and the shift. So really nice feature if you're, if you're traveling and monitoring a certain frequency, you can, you can beacon out that information. And if other people are in your vicinity with a similar radio, I know the Kenwoods can also um, translate this information. You can you can um, tune on the fly to that frequency and have a QSO. And then finally, uh, the APRS ringer. And um, 
This will set off a tone whenever you get a message, like a beacon or um, a packet, or somebody uh, sends you a call. Um, I leave these all set to off. Um, otherwise, this thing is beeping all the time. I don't care if messages are flashing on the screen, but um, the, beeping, the beeping noise gets a little annoying, so I just turn those all off. And that, in a nutshell, is uh, the features for the, um, the basic features for setting APRS on the FTM 400. We'll talk about some of the more advanced features in, uh, in my next video. So save the file and um, export it to your, or in, 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 and write it to your um, SD card and um, import it back into the radio and you're good to go. Back in the vehicle, I've replaced the SD card and uploaded the changes to the radio. To get started tracking, I'll first want to tune the B-band to my APRS channel. Next, I'll go to the APRS menu and turn on the modem. The radio will start decoding packets on that APRS channel. At this point, I'm not transmitting until I turn the beacon on. So to get the beacon going, I'll press the function button and then select the beacon button. Up in the corner of the display, you'll see either a hollow circle or a solid circle. You'll want the solid circle as then the radio will beacon at standard intervals. The hollow circle means that the smart beaconing feature is on and we'll talk about that in my advanced APRS video for the FTM 400. So let's take a drive and see how this thing works. That's it for the essential APRS features of the uh, Yaesu FTM 400. Uh, do you have any questions about using APRS on this radio? Please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. And maybe we'll add those to the advanced APRS video that's coming out next. For more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. And also, uh, you might want to take a look at some of these videos that are uh, recommended alongside me here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Pressing subscribe is your way of being notified when future videos are released. Well, that's it for this episode. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.